Hassan for the amazing organization. Really appreciate that. And Rehab, I love you. This is the reason I do this work because I, you know, my background is oncology. I've never realized how much impact I have on people's life until I started doing uh, severe endometriosis. I think uh, the challenge is, you know, it's a very common disease. It affects one out of 10 uh, women. However, four to five out of 10 women uh, with fertility problems have endometriosis and diagnosed. It's, uh, it affects the quality of life, relationship, you know, the chances of having a baby, just name it. The delay in diagnosis up to 20 years, the reason for that, why, you know, it is challenging. One is exactly what we have, have said. Pa woman pain is regarded as normal. Period pain, oh, I had period pain as well. It's whether it's the society or the medical profession, we don't appreciate woman pain because we don't feel it, we don't see it, we don't touch it. Uh, we have lack of expertise in non-invasive diagnostics. We don't have enough experience in ultrasound and MRI diagnosis. You know, my special interest is severe endometriosis because it's the one that can uh, cause you know, disabilitating pain and serious problems. Um, Clinical assessment, we forget to take a full history. We have period pain and we move to the next question. Have you had any surgery? We don't do full assessment. There is no blood test. CA125 is of no value. Uh, the medical insurance, especially in this country, if there is no cyst on the ovaries, they will not approve a diagnostic laparoscopy to establish diagnosis. However, laparoscopy is not uh, the right tool. Yeah, Marlin, please. Can you hear me? Okay, I'll carry on. Uh, you know, even if we find ovarian cysts on the ultrasound, we call it hemorrhagic cyst, and we don't really diagnose it properly. So I came to Dubai in October 2017. It took me a whole year to set up the center. The importance of a center is public awareness, education and training. It improves outcome. It allows uh, for research, sharing data, you know, uh, sharing clinical practices. And that's why it's important to uh, establish an endometriosis center. Why it's important to diagnose endometriosis? Rehab told you her story. She couldn't get, have a baby. Uh, the disease is progression. She ended uh, requiring bowel resection. Um, you know, ovarian reserve is completely destroyed with the ovaries. So women be, be, you know, become infertile. Uh, loss of work, loss of school days, psychological impact, relationship, you know, uh, we all have seen many patients and heard many patients who ended with bowel resection when they came with, um, with bowel obstruction or perforation or, uh, you know, they found a bowel mass and surprise, surprise, the histology comes in endometriosis and they never had the chance of proper diagnosis and proper surgical treatment. The bowel resection on its own is not a treatment. So... You know, in the UK, where I was trained, the NHS commissioning recommendation is that we should centralize uh, endometriosis surgery for deep infiltrating endometriosis. It's an area that requires, uh, you know, it's a surgical complex. It has high complication rate. Um, centralizing it is providing um, an effective and comprehensive care. Um, and it allows you to engage in high quality research, it improves outcome, and uh, it provides the best, uh, best uh, care for women. MDT approach is essential. You know, it's been endorsed by ESHRI, EHE, BHE, the American, the Canadian, just name it. However, you need to create a team. This type of surgery is quite expensive. It's resource demanding. And an MDT approach, it's 
you know, leads to a better result uh, for the patient and also less complications. Uh, and that is essential. So what did we do? What did I do? I, I, mean, I mean, the whole reason I came to Dubai because I was convinced that I will be able to set up an endometrial center. It took me a whole year. I started working on patient education. I worked with local organization, Dubai Woman Club, the American University, just name it. I've used the conventional media, newspaper, you know, perhaps said something about, you know, the language barrier. So I, I published so many articles in Arabic, English, uh, in newspapers, the media, I've created the first ever, um, endometriosis patient support group in the UAE to create a forum for patients to support uh, each other. Um, I managed to get accreditation, provisional accreditation from the BSGE for two years. However, they decided from 2020 not to support any overseas centers because of uh, difficulty in monitoring them. However, having the BSGE umbrella allowed me to push uh, a lot in setting the center. Uh, I needed a high definition laparoscopic stack. It's expensive. That was an important part, but the most important part is my surgical team. Radiology, I don't believe that I should give anybody an empty check to sign on um, and they can put the figures. The same thing, I should not be entering a woman's abdomen with a blank check to do whatever. I need to know whether I'm going to do bowel resection or whatever. Radiology helps me. MRI helped me. I brought my radiologist from the UK. She trained my local radiologist here and he was amazing. We have not done any case of bowel resection where we did not anticipate that we need bowel resection from the MRI finding, and that is really essential. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, Emil helped me, and uh, you know, we've created many CME meetings uh, to allow for uh, the diagnosis and the management and the education. So the management approach for these ladies is, you know, the three principles, alleviation of pain, improvement of fertility, and prevention of uh, progression, worsening, and recurrence of the disease. Individualizing the care, whether it's a medical or medical and surgical or surgical approach. I've, you know, it is important to work with local uh, environment, local uh, facilities. So I worked with ORCID uh, and other IVF, you know, on embryo freezing, um, ovarian uh, cancer freezing, um, and all of that, uh, you know, because that is an essential part. I mean, we say in Europe, if uh, the pain is not a prominent feature, uh, patients should go for IVF. In this country, patients sometimes don't have the uh, finance for IVF and you have to consider surgery. So, um, so that's, you know, my approach. The laparoscopic excision, I believe strongly that laparoscopic and radical laparoscopic excision of deep infiltrating endometriosis is of value. And, you know, this is, you know, supported by many research and, uh, and publication. Um, so what do I do? I start with, I use the pelvic pain questionnaire of the BSGE, even though that I don't have the accreditation now, I still use it. Uh, I use the enzyme calcification. I use the enzyme calcification um, when I do clinical assessment, ultrasound, and MRI correlated with the surgical enzyme classification. And we sit up before and after every case, we review what we know about the case as part of the, uh, our uh, surgical expertise and development. I'm going to share my result. I'm just showing the first two cases. As I said, my first group of cases was in October uh, 2018. And my last big group of cases was in March, just before the corona. In one week, I performed nine cases. I think I've done a marathon of surgery. Um, 
So uh, out of the 42 cases, the, uh, the average age is 36.9. Uh, 38 out of the 42, I performed them with the help of my colleague, the colorectal surgeon, Dr. Firas Yunus. And uh, the age of the patient, as you can see, uh, the bulk of the patient is actually uh, under the age of 30. Looking at the previous surgery, you know, many of these women had multiple surgeries, including multiple laparotomies, such as seven women had laparotomies, they had one ovaries removed, they, they had at least one laparoscopic uh, surgery in 17 cases. And, um, and that's the challenge. If you enter an abdomen that somebody been before inside, it's, you know, the adhesion is quite extensive and difficult. The parity, uh, most of the patient 28 um, have never been pregnant before. 13 uh, already had children. Uh, if we look at the number of the cases who had uh, infertility, uh, if you see in that group, 21 had uh, primary infertility. However, there is a group of women had secondary infertilities and a small group uh, who never tried to get pregnant uh, before. If we look at the size of the ovarian cyst, um, the cysts range from one centimeter to 18. I looked at the unilateral and bilateral. Uh, 14 women didn't have a cyst on their ovaries out of the 42, but the majority had either one or uh, bilateral uh, ovarian cysts. If we look at the presence of hydro and hematosalpings, half the, of the women there was no problem with the tubes, or 19 out of the 42. Uh, the other 19 had unilateral hematohydrosalpings and four had bilateral. And that's one of the, you know, mechanism of the infertility, but there is multiple other reason they add with infertility. CA125 is of no value. It's value for getting uh, insurance approval because they just don't understand it. And the interesting 75% of the women who have severe endometriosis, I found they have high CA125 more than uh, 35. Uh, while women with mild endometriosis, only 25% will have uh, CA125. I give them GNHRH before the surgery because um, it reduces the amount of uh, the bleeding at the time of the surgery. It makes the dissection easier. However, the main reason is because the moment you start excising endometriosis, you, re you release all these cytokines, killer cells, the mediators of inflammation, and the pain management post-op is quite challenging. So hence I use one month before the surgery uh, for if, if I'm able to, to do so. And uh, definitely post-op because it improves, uh, um, it, it decreases the risk of uh, relapse within the first 24 months. And there is a lot of evidence uh, from research. Looking at the bowel resection, interesting, you know, um, you know, I've been doing severe endometriosis cases for the last 10 years. Um, in the UK, I barely done three bowel resections, and I've done, you know, much significant higher number of cases. In Dubai, out of the 42, I had to do five bowel resection. My youngest is a 28-year-old, and if you can see about the, the parity, uh, two of them never been pregnant. However, uh, the other three had already had children. I use MRI and zincantification, and you know the C stands for the bowel, and you can see it's C2C3. Uh, we judge it depending on the depth of the uh, involvement of the bowel to decide on the uh, bowel resection. Uh, complication, I'm, I've been fortunate. We had no major complications. Um, uh, at all, the challenging uh, cases were, um, we, we had two cases who developed hematuria post-operatively and the two of them, uh, I mean, significant hematuria, and the two of them became anuric because they had a blood clot in the ureters bilateral. So uh, immediate intervention with cystoscopy and stenting with my amazing urologist, this is where you need a team and this is where you need to 
be able to monitor these patients closely and jump very quickly and intervene. In this country, which is different from Europe, is you know the slightest complication, even uh, if it is hematuria, it means you as a doctor have done something wrong. So that's why the education and the training and the, the patient's awareness and the expectations uh, is so important to be addressed before the surgery. One had readmission following surgery and we had to do a laparoscopy for her because she developed a PID. Unfortunately, the, the, it was an ascending infection due to significant hygiene issues. Outcome is so related to the preoperative assessment history, diagnosis, MDT approach, centralization of complex surgery is essential. Having an expert team behind you, one person is not enough. You need the whole team. Counseling of the patient is essential. I provide them with information leaflets written um, before the surgery about what to expect, the fine details the bowel prep, the diet, you know, we, we talked yesterday to Professor Popov, what he did with his cases. I give them a special diet for 24 hours before the surgery, uh, give them bowel prep, hydration, uh, GMHRH. I see them twice daily. The nursing had been amazing with identifying any, I mean, if the urine output decreases less than 50 ml per hour, they hydrate them. If no response, they call me immediately. And that is essential, is um, you know, immediately able to respond. The outcome, I use the BSGE uh, to monitor the outcome at uh, 4, 12, and 18 months. And I'll show you the data in, in a minute. Uh, out of the 42 cases, only 12 wanted to get pregnant. And, I, and only 12 who actually had a normal AMH as ovarian reserve, had the normal sperm analysis and intact tubes. Uh, I mean, I, just to say I've done, uh, I do fibrioplasty. I don't remove the tubes unless the tube is completely damaged and there is no reason, um, you know, I can't save the tube. And, uh, uh, and out of these 12 ladies who want to get pregnant, six are spontaneously pregnant. And uh, one of these uh, cases is the bowel resection. I did fibroplasty on her, and now she is uh, 14 weeks pregnant, uh, spontaneous pregnancy. And this is where, you know, uh, holistic approach is important. The outcome, this is the pain score prior to the surgery. And post-surgery, you can see minimal uh, dysmenorrhea. There is no bubble symptoms whatsoever. The bubble symptoms in, completely disappears after the surgery, whether it's the constipation, rectal bleeding, uh, you know, the dyscasia all disappears. And you know, uh, rehab is one of the cases where she had severe migraine. And interestingly, uh, migraine completely disappeared and she's not using any painkiller anymore. Um, and there is some studies which showed actually uh, there is a link between migraine and endometriosis. So the new ongoing challenges is, you know, the same old, however, the DRG. People who work in this country understand what I'm talking about is uh, the cost of the surgery. You spent like four hours operating and the DRG doesn't cover uh, barely the cost of the instruments that you use. Uh, so this is the ongoing challenge. I mean, I'm setting an endometriosis center in King's College. I have an amazing support. I'm working with the radiologist and training a new radiologist. So, the, you know, this is, uh, you know, my ongoing uh, challenge. And, you know, one of the things I would love to do is set up training for radiologists. So we have more, you know, a larger team who are able to diagnose on ultrasound and MRI. Thank you very much, everybody.